Good evening. This is the News on NT International live in Abuja. I'm Ruth Aguele. Thanks for joining us. Let's take the headlines. Federal government rolls out palliative to farmers for more food production as efforts to fight coronavirus intensifies. National Assembly reconvenes Tuesday for plenary amid COVID-19, just as National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies sets up technical committee on COVID-19. Nigeria and Jamaica deep in cooperation on fight against coronavirus, optimistic that the world will overcome the health crisis. And here are the full details. President Muhammad Buhari will address the nation at 8 p.m. tonight. A statement by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshina, in John's television, radio and other electronic media outfits to hook up to the network services of the Nigerian Television Authority and Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria for the broadcast. Let's take you to PTF um, on COVID-19. The Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 says it will continue to pursue aggressive testing, detection, isolation, contact tracing, care, and management of coronavirus cases. Chairman of the Tax Force, Boss Mustafa, who confirmed this at the COVID-19 briefing in Abuja, said the situation in Kanu is closely monitored by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. The state government and guidance by the federal ministry as well as support from development partners. After having assessed impact of four cumulative weeks of the restriction order, the PTF says it has made necessary recommendations to the president for action. That the fight against COVID-19 is a fight for all of us. It is only when we unite that victory can in the next phase of this flight. It is time for us to individually and collectively take responsibilities for the next steps that we are going to take in the days and weeks ahead. Minister of State for Health Adeleke Mamora confirmed that there are two additional labs activated in Sokoto and Zaria, bringing the number to 15. He also said the federal government will send a high-powered delegation to work with Kanu state government on worrisome trend of deaths in the state. People in Kano, and we will continue scaling the number of people supporting Kano state until we get to the appropriate number. If you suspect or someone around you has been exposed to COVID-19, call the toll-free 112 number. There have been unfortunate reports of persons who suspect COVID-19 in critical condition, losing valuable time in trying to contact NCDC for a test. Force attributes increasing rate of community transmission in the country to violations of restriction order and that the Federal Ministry of Health is set up an emergency ambulance system to respond to their cases of COVID-19 in homes. On the global scene, we hear it's Freedom Day in South Africa, but the people are locked down due to COVID-19. And the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson resumes after recovery from coronavirus complications. Adabala Brooksland Brooklyn Sunday has this and more on Global Update. On the 26th of April 2020, Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, confirmed 91 new cases and recorded five new deaths in the country. Four new states, Eboi, Bayelsa, Kebi, and Taraba, reported confirmed cases in the last 24 hours. In total, 1,273 cases have been confirmed, 239 discharged, and 40 deaths have been recorded in 32 states and the federal capital territory. In South Africa, the 2020 Freedom Day is celebrated using online platforms as the people are locked down due to the coronavirus pandemic. The day is in commemoration of the first post apartheid national elections held in South Africa on the 27th April 1994. 
South Africa has 4,220 confirmed cases, 87 deaths, and 1,473 recoveries. In the UK, after suffering from a severe case of coronavirus, Prime Minister Boris Johnson returned to work almost a month after he tested positive for COVID-19 with a major challenge of how to lift the lockdown that is negatively affecting the British economy without triggering a deadly second wave of the outbreak. So far, 148,377 persons have been affected by the virus, while 20,319 have died and many people have recovered in the UK. World Ometer Tracker at about 6.50 p.m. Nigerian time shows that coronavirus cases have now reached a new record by infecting 3,019,241 people, out of which 208,110 persons have died, while 889,310 have recovered. I am Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday. Thank you, Andy Wolof, for that update. Nigeria and Jamaica are asking for a deeper global cooperation in the fight against coronavirus pandemic. The two countries are optimistic that the world will overcome the health crisis with support and teamwork. Usman Ali reports. Coronavirus pandemic is making global diplomacy more complicated, but nations are trying to speak to each other, like this event which brought together top diplomats from Nigeria and Jamaica, whose 50 years of born in bilateral relations they say must be strengthened. At this time, they agreed to improve on cooperation in trade, tourism, sports, music and arts. Uh, we, we are both members, of course, of the Commonwealth, and, um, and most um, multilateral organizations and agencies. So we look to also cooperate uh, with Nigeria uh, and uh, Jamaica to be on the same page uh, in addressing uh, global issues. As you have highlighted this year, we will be undertaking many activities to highlight the 50 years of our cooperation. We have put them on pause, or well, the pandemic has put some of them on pause, but. We will, as soon as the opportunity arises, we will be getting back on track. Nigeria and Jamaica have historical and cultural ties, and the officials of the two countries say once coronavirus is over, the relationship will be reinforced. In Abuja, Usman Aliu. The lockdown in some parts of the country necessitated by the need to contain the spread of coronavirus may have taken Nigerians unaware. But the reality is that the situation here with, is here with varying impacts on the people. Kelvin Ahunwa here reports on the psychological effects on the citizens. And mobility are fundamental to the well-being of any society. When people are restricted in whatever circumstance, especially during a pandemic, Within a time frame, frustration or maybe depression sets in and tempers ultimately flares. Then comes the psychological and mental stretch when citizens struggle to meet daily needs within the time. I'm not feeling fine, to say the truth. I'm not feeling fine. Actually, we are not coping. No. The, this thing, no money, nothing. In the house like this, we don't... You don't... I usually get angry. Experts say the high level of anxiety and frustration can only be tamed by the acceptance of the reality and developing innate coping mechanisms. Around your street, walk out and know, so that take the children out, don't let them bottle themselves inside because if they are bottled in there, the energy in them is so much that what is inside your house cannot contain the, that energy. And what they will do, they will take it out on your, on your chair, on your television, on your so many things. We, I know all these frustrations are there. Let everybody know that it is a thing that everybody is going through. 
Now, let us uh, therefore be patient with one another. That's what I would say. Don't let uh, irritation come to you. Don't let anger come. And then manage what you have. Times are tough, no doubt. But if the lockdown is what is required as collective sacrifice to hurt the spread of COVID-19 and return life to normal, the temporal pains should pay off. In Abuja, Kelvin Awunwaye, NTA News. Couldn't agree less, Kelvin. Officials of road transport unions have vowed to comply with the federal government lockdown directive by ensuring no vehicle leaves the designated motor parks in Abuja for any state. Austin Ayambe, who visited some of the parks in Abuja, now reports. It is almost a month since the federal government directive on lockdown in Abuja, Lagos and Ogun State came into force. Though there has been substantial compliance with the directive within the Federal Capital Territory by residents, the volume of traffic on the interstate route called for concern. Out of curiosity on where this vehicle pick their passengers from, we were at Jabi Park, one of the major parks in the FCT, to see if it is open to passengers traveling to other parts of the country. Surprisingly, we met the gate on a lock and key. Some vehicles that attempted entry into the park were turned back by officials of the National Union of Road Transport Workers. You can see it. This our park is locked. We have been locked in our park because of this situation that we are now. So because we don't want any our vehicle to go out, we don't want any stranger vehicle to come here. So all our bikes now, the day house, some the day here. Look at it now. So they don't park there. So there's no only movement now. Other mini parks where people traveling to other parts of the country board their vehicles shows how drivers idle around. Why some of them appreciate the measures put in place by the government to check the spread of COVID-19. Others say they are in rather difficult pedestrian. What governments are doing that they are trying to help us, but at a point there is nothing like information. It's a very bad situation, but we really know the government is trying to help us by protecting us from this, contacting this disease. But if you want to lock down, the lockdown should be in appropriate way. It's a cruel day, but any way in B, make government fit for us. I be driver. I don't know if you go anything. I there I'm a delivery for the ghost. The thing shocked me down for years since, since that time. Meanwhile, security operatives have continued to enforce the lockdown order within the city centre in Abuja, Austin and Yebe, NT News. Joining me live now in the studio to look at the psychological impact of the lockdown is Dr. James Komolafe. He's a cognitive behavioral therapist and also of the School of Articulation and Behavioral Alignment Resources. Thank you very much, Dr. Komolafe, for joining us. Thank you so very much. Good to be here again. All right. Um, amid the lockdown occasioned by COVID-19, what psychological trauma do you think people are going through presently? A whole lot. You can hear from the interview out there, some are angry, people anger, some are depressed, dankers. You see, without much ado, the psychological effect on people, Nigerians, is huge. And COVID-19 lockdown has brought out both the good, the bad, and even the ugly out of everyone. But what we're saying is that everyone needs to see this time as a moment of investing into health, holistic health, the behavioral health, and every area of our health. Because we know at the other side of the tunnel, we'll all be happy. So the tendency is there for people to be downcast, depressed, sad, anxiety, some even in panic attack just because we've never been this way before especially at this time not in our generation despite other pandemics there but now it has come mm. we have to uh, raise our gauge and our behavioral health especially in the area of our coping mechanism to know that this has come Okay, and, and talking certainly it will have to go. So we have to reinforce ourselves mm. emotionally to be able to cope with the situation on ground. So uh, it's uh, not it's been easy, it's not been funny. Okay, Dr. Kumalafe, it's good you mentioned emotions. Um, 
how do you think people can manage their emotions this period as you also look at how um, people can contain social pressures they're having? Very vital. Now the emphasis has even shifted from uh, uh, people just moving about, you staying at home and all of that. Mm. Staying at home, I want to see the sufficient condition to the necessary condition of leaving the town and just staying at home in order to flatten the curve of, of spread. Staying at home is the sufficient condition which involves what I call the triangular model for mm. every family within the community. It's the various families at home that make up the community. So what's the triangular model? or the peak of the triangle you have the family unit then uh, on the two bases you have possibly the health worker who will come in to interface and interact and on the other base is other uh, people coming around so the three model says one you need to cooperate with the relevant stakeholders to be sure that you you you, you take the social distancing physical distancing serious and do the needful as required. Then you need uh, a consensus within the family unit to say, see, this is the reason why we are doing this. So let's flatten the curve. And then you also need a cooperation. Okay. And then carefulness there so that you don't say, oh, because we are at home, we can't flatten it. You can, you can still flatten it. And whatever you do from the home point can af actually affect the community. So every family must play the responsibility game very, very carefully so that we don't amplify the spread even while we're at home. So there's a necessary condition vacating the roads and offices and don't mingle and then the sufficient condition in the family units. All right, so very briefly now, Dr. Komalafe, how can people surmount this? What would you recommend people should be doing at home? A whole lot. Like I said the other time, you must uh, rejig your coping mechanism. You must engage yourself productively. You must make sure that you don't just sit in one place waiting for when the lockdown will, 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 will be over. You see, whether it is over or not, you are responsible to your health, to your lifestyle. Do something productive, do something meaningful, engage yourself, exercise. Take assessment of yourself. Build your energies in the right perspective to mm -hmm. doing the right thing. Knowing that this time has just come and it will still go away. And Certainly. We'll pass back to our normal state. Certainly, everything that has a beginning has an end. Thank you very much, Dr. James Komolafe. He's a cognitive behavioral therapist. Let's go on a break. We'll back shortly. So you stay tuned. Welcome, dear. Have you washed your hands? Inside my house, okay. This is not the key black man. Ah! I don't know if it's misinformation or poor hygiene that will kill you first. Coronavirus is real, and good hygiene practice will save your life. Oh. Anyway, no hand washing, no eating. I will not take care of it. That's what I virus is real and it's on the rise but you can help yourself and help others to be safe remember we can stop the spread it's in your hands this message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support Thanks for staying tuned. The Senate is to reconvene at plenary tomorrow, Tuesday, 28th of April, 2020. A statement by the clerk of the Senate, Nelson Ayewo, says senators are by this notice expected to sit in plenary by 10 o'clock in the morning. Staff and senators' aides are to work from home as they will be notified when they are needed in the office for any special assignments. Similarly, the House of Representatives is set to reconvene plenary on Tuesday, 28th April 2020. A statement by the House Clerk Patrick Giwa indicates that guidelines approved by the federal government and the Center for Disease Control, including additional guidelines
developed by House will be communicated to members. The statement, however, adds that staff and member aides to work from home as they will be notified when they are needed in the office for any special assignments. In the meantime, Director General of the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, Professor Abubakar Suleiman, has set up a technical committee of experts on COVID-19. The committee is to develop a legislative and policy proposals for consideration of the National Assembly, as many countries around the world draw up plans for lifting the coronavirus lockdown and restrictions, as well as strategies for restarting the economies. It is equally imperative for the Nigerian government to develop a robust exit strategy that online steps to reopen the economy and health measures to protect against resurgence of COVID-19. The committee, which includes economists, political scientists and medical experts, will also produce a legislative framework for consideration National Assembly. In the related developments, Professor Suleiman has also commissioned a study to, among others, examine the relationship between pandemics and political economy and highlights short and long term measures to avert these and future crises. The coronavirus crisis has raised important questions on how worsening economic crisis is intertwined with pandemics. It has also exposed the daunting deficiencies of public health systems and threats to industries, supply chains, and stock markets. Let's look at more issues arising from COVID-19 in fulfillment of his promise to assist in the containment of coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria. The Oni of Ife has presented two motorized machines to all your state government. Dayo Ogunshola tells us more. The fumigation motorized machine capable of fumigating two kilometers radius within 20 minutes is locally built in Hilefe to augment government's effort to combat coronavirus pandemic for the nooks and crannies of Nigeria. The modular fumigation machines were test run within the palace before the fumigation of major streets in the Asian city of Ileife. Oba Ogunwusi emphasized the need for more innovative ways of fighting the scourge of coronavirus pandemic. Way and manner fumigation is being done. It has actually become a global mockery what has been done in the western world pulled all the youths together maintained all the rules and regulation and we started fabricating this we have now decided to give it for free to all the 36 states of this country the monarch urged nigerians to use the current lockdown to come up with ideas that could cope the scourge of coronavirus Let's look at how Greek farmers are getting set for the commencement of this year's rainy season. Farming activities amid COVID-19 restrictions. This is coming as the federal government rolls out palliative to assist farmers to be able to produce more food as efforts to fight coronavirus intensifies. Musa Baba Aliyu takes a look and Phil and takes a look at this. COVID-19 was first reported at a very crucial time of farming in Nigeria as it falls on the peak of dry season farming activities. These farmers say the high supply of vegetables coupled with low demand in the north were are major challenges to dry season farmers this year. The farmers that are doing irrigation farming, they have already planted since uh, around uh, uh, December, January, in which they are expecting to harvest their product by this time around. But because of this problem now, some of them, they cannot be able to assess to, to their palms. This year's rain is in here already, just as the virus known as COVID-19 is still in the country. Even though most states are under lockdown, the federal government says measures put in place to eradicate the ravaging virus will not affect farming activities. Hence, the need to put in place a strategy to facilitate Free movement of food and agricultural inputs nationwide to avoid food shortages and to ensure 2020 production season is not hampered. To this end, the federal government has directed that fertilizer should now be sold to farmers at 5,000 naira against the current price of 5,500 naira. The PFI has now expanded its scope to also produce other blends of MPK fertilizer to cut out for the diverse fertilizer requirements of Nigerian farmers. Minister of Science and Technology is pushing for the production of more than 1 million early maturing yam seedlings to be distributed to 
farmers. To this end, government directs that farmers should be allowed access to their farms in any part of the country. In Abuja, Musa Baba Ali, NTA News. The All Progressives Congress condemns the latest attempt by the opposition People's Democratic Party to downplay the efforts of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration in tackling the scourge of COVID-19 currently ravaging the world. A statement by APC National Publicity Secretary Larry Isa Onilu says recent actions by the PDP translates to an attempt to play petty politics with serious matters of national and international importance. The APC notes that the latest accusation by the PDP that APC-led government has not lived up to its responsibility of protecting the people of Kano State against the backdrop of some deaths recorded in the state is false. The governing party acknowledges well-meaning organizations at home and abroad and individuals who are putting in positive shifts to overcome COVID-19 and urge the People's Democratic Party to borrow a patriotic efforts being made by the cross-party platform. The statement adds that Nigeria Governors Forum has kept politics aside and joined President Buhari in jointly, proactively and frontally combating the pandemic. Worthy of note, as parts of emergency operations put in place by the federal government, are centers established in states to serve as coordination platforms and networked to a national incident coordination center. More testing laboratory centers, centers as NDC NCDC now has 15 testing centers with testing capacity increasing to over 3,000 daily from just a few hundreds weeks ago. And just a reminder, President Muhammad Buhari will address the nation at 8 p.m. tonight. A statement by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Femi Adesino and Jones Television, Radio and all the electronic media outfits to join to hook up to the network services of the Nigerian Television Authority and Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria for Broadcast. And we're done with the news. Thanks for your time. I'm Ruth Aguele. Bye.